Hello everyone, my name is Fajar Purnama. I am a student from the Graduate School of Science and Technology, Kumamoto University. And I got an assignment to present this paper called Deep Investigation of Cross-Language Plagiarism Detection Method. And my slide is available in another link. And if you click the title of this slide, you can go to the down to the link of the original paper which is by Jeremy Ferrero et al. from a university in France. And this paper is published in the Proceedings of the 10th Workshop on Building and Using Comparable Corpora, page, starting from page 615 in Vancouver, Canada, August 3, 2017. And to be honest, this is not really my field which I'm concentrating on, so I don't really I don't really know much about plagiarism, uh, plagiarism detection methods or even cross languages, corporas and etc. But I will try my best to do this presentation. Well, for this video it's just a video presentation though. So although there are many in the paper itself there are there are many sections but i summarized them into an introduction method and res result and conclusion the details are of course for the expert and professional you can discuss much but for myself i'm not i'm not so well versed in this kind of topic so i'll just try to present some summary of it so, um in other words what i know now let's start with the introduction but before that I would like to inform you and to be frank that all of the materials in this slide I got most of them almost all of them from of course the proceeding paper which is you can find on this link and I got the most of the methods illustration from the author's original slide which is at this one you can click on the link so there are few methods and you can see that he provides some fig some illustrations which I tried finding on the web for illustrations of these methods but it seems that the one that is provided on the author's original slide is the best so forgive me that I would like to take this one to present here and all of the other tables and data figures statistics I got if not from the paper I also took them from the author's github which is here here for example this kind of table I took and I took some data from the statistics uh, stats.xsl and some other for example study and the data sets and you can find some results here now that is everything for the information outside of this slide now let's really focus on this slide on this video so this paper or this slide this presentation is about cross-language plagiarism where the title was a deep investigation so many methods so first let's look at the words plagiarism plagiarism is about stealing others work or for example taking without permission claiming it as your own or something that you claim when without following the proper procedures like uh, you breach the copyright and you you take the work without citing also ever but uh, in, for example in schools you are copying somebody else's work you're copying your friend's homework for example those are included into plagiarism so for this is the figure here a sample is the illustration 
and next what is the cross language plagiarism so the cross language plagiarism is translating someone's work but claiming them as your own so for example the original documents is English is in English and then you translate that document or publication into French or Spanish or into your own language for example and then you publish them into a proceeding into a journal or anywhere else without the proper procedures or permission from the original and for example on this illustration you translate and then you claim that this work is your own so this is what is called cross-language plagiarism so what is this research contribution or what does this research did to the cross-language plagiarism so this research perform a uh, quite a big experiment based on my opinion which they provide a wide data set very wide and they try to benchmark or try try a lot of method cross language similar similarity method and they provide results evaluation and discussions about after trying all of this method so the data set so the data set consists of english french and spanish documents there is a parallel and comparable corpora so parallel means that documents are directly translated from one another while comparable it means though both documents are similar but they are not translated but they are usually created in by different people for example wikipedia and they are, the data set contains machine and manually translated documents it contains various amount of i'll uh, speak obfuscation and name entities and the data set contains document sentence and noun chunks and the method that is tried here can be categorized into there is there are there is a syntax based model method there is a dictionary based model there is a parallel corpora based model and there is a com comparable corpora based model and there is a machine translated based model okay the next section is the method even though in the paper there is uh, some extra other sections but i would like to keep it simple and to make it easy easier to explain or even shorter on this slide so i go straight to the method section so as i told you before that the data set there contains some parallel and comparable corpora and it can there is a human and machine translated um, that corpus the, and there is many obfuscation whether they are noise whether they are clean and some alterations and these are in the percentage of the name entities can the authors can be politicians and more professional authors and so yes as, is, as I said on the previous slide so the corpus or the data set they took it from G jrc arcois europal wikipedia pen pc11 amazon product reviews and some conference paper and this is the amount so jrc arcois have uh, 10,000 aligned documents 149,000 aligned sentences and 10,000 aligned non chunks and so on with other data set and anyway this is the amount aligned documents the amount of aligned documents aligned sentences and aligned non chunks so on this slide is shown the state of the art methods that is that are used on that white data set so the methods are natural language processing methods which is used to find similarities 
and to be honest my I myself I'm not into this kind of field I mean I know less about this field about natural language processing but anyway I will try my best to explain this slide that I made and about this paper but truly this field is very new to me I I rarely touch this field but I'll try to make it simple my explanation simple so as I mentioned in the previous slide there is five types of model that is used which are syntax based dictionary parallel corpora comparable corpora base machine translator base and I took this figure from the paper and it's also available on the slide that the, the model that is used the one that is not transparent for example CLCNG CLCTS while this transparent one I think these are not used while they are available they are there so the first method then I want to explain is about the syntax based model which I think is also the first one used on the paper which is called the cross language character n-gram where the n here they use is 3 so let me try to explain this I too never tried on this and it's quite new but let's go anyway so the text are then are segmented into three grams so there is so there is a sequence of characters within a sentence and they are segmented into three let's go for example on the English did the and then they move to the next section the he and the space and then the e to c space c and so on and the probability of this character of this sequence appearing is calculated for example t the probability is 0 0.56 and the next sequence to appear the it depends so if you look at the probability it makes sense so probability of sequence of three continuous character and after that is transformed into a TF IDF vectors of character 3 grams and after that the metric used to compare the two vectors is the cosine similarity so after they transform into the vectors they compare the two vectors and using the cosine similarity whether they are similar or not so this is actually like to find similarities called the character n-gram method but this one is for cross language model so the next method is the dictionary based model which I want to explain the, the method that they use is called the cross language conceptual service based model so I put some notes here which I uh, which I summarized from the paper which this is uh, some sort of a semantic similarity detection based model so to s I summarize it like this for each sentence they build a bag of words using a binary lexical resources to get the translation of each word from dictionary source this one is binary lexical resource and for example like the translation of cat in English is a kitten, cat, kitty, house cat. So it's French to English and English to English. So they get they so they get all um, possible translation, possible what you call translation or synonyms of these words. And then they use the jacket distance with fuzzy mesh with fuzzy matching to measure the similarity between the two generated sentence. So this one is the union of this one, union of this one. After they get 
the distance there will be so the one in this middle is the similarity and the one outside is maybe not so we can see that the closer these two circles are mean the intersection meaning that there will be more similarity and stuff now the next model is the parallel corpora base model they use the cross language conceptual alignment based alignment based similarity analysis so i also summarize the paragraph in a paper which it says that using the bilingual unigram dictionary which contains translation pairs and their probabilities mm, as you can see from the figure the and le versus le le the the probability of the and the probability of le and cat probability of le and drinks time the probability of cat and cat and so ever and after you cross all of these probabilities and then it equals to probability that one of the sentence is the translation of the second so extracted from a parallel corpus to determine how a textual unit is potentially the translation of another textual unit so this is yeah it's just as the name of the method it's called the conceptual alignment base similarity analysis so the next method is about the comparable corpora base model which the method they use is a cross language conceptual explicit semantic analysis so from the summary of the paper it's a explicit semantic analysis model which represents the meaning of a document this one is French and this was in English in vectors and then based on the vocabulary derived from Wikipedia they using those vocabulary from, uh, from Wikipedia they try to find documents within the, the corpus on this case they try to find the similar similarity between the English and the French language documents and the last model that they use is the machine translation based model so the method is called translation postmonolingual analysis T plus MA it consists in replacing each word of one text by its most likely translations in the language of another so the cat it can it can so for example cat it can be cat kitten kitty most likely is cat leading to backs of words like in the Soros base model in the, the second one that I showed the metric used to compare the two texts is a monolo mon monolingual matching base on strict intersections of back of words so drink here can be drain absorb or mb and um let's see which one light or void okay sorry for the for the lack of explanations in the method itself I really don't have experience in them and I hope there is something that you can obtain though so now let's go to the re result section so the experiment this uh, this explanation or description I to be on to be frank I directly copied this from the slide itself which is more clear to me though than reading the paper so the first experiment is that each textual unit was compared to its corresponding unit in another language and to 999 other units randomly selected. Then they obtained decent metrics was trails holded 
to find the threshold giving the best F1 score. Then these two steps were repeated 10 times leading to a tenfold validation and the value are the average of the 10 F1 score. Now straight to the result tested on chunks. The, um, the five methods that I showed in the previous slides and tested when finding um, cross-language plagiarism, plagiarism English to France, France to English, English to Spanish, Spanish to English and Spanish to French and French to Spanish and looking from the colors and from the numbers of course that the cross language character engram shows an overall a higher F1 scores which means overall in the chunks with different uh, language pairs that the cross language character engram performs the best other than that the cross language alignment semantical analysis base performs better in the English to France and English to Spanish then the next one will be should be and this one too French to English and for Spanish to France and French to Spanish the source base method is performs be performs better after that and here for the chunks there is the Pearson correlation meaning the higher the Pearson correlation the more that this the methods of the language pair can be used for others for example if the language pair the, if for example if the machine is tuned for the English to French language pair is likely to perform better on other language pair but based on this data the English to French French language pair method attuned for this one might may not be performed well on perform as well as for as if it's applied for French to Spanish um, language pair so but in overall the tuning for each of the language pair it one tuning of the language pair can perform better can perform well on other language pairs so just one tuning can be enough based on this data so this is what the Pearson correlation means based on my opinion so the next result is the result in sentences for each language pair not not as the, the ones in chunks that the cross language character and gram method performs better than the other but overall still character and gram is better it's better for the English to France France to English English to Spanish Spanish to English language pair but for but when it comes to the Spanish to French and French to Spanish language pair, the source base is better. Um, my mistake I mean only for the Spanish to French language pair. For the French to Spanish still the um, the character engram um, method is better. Um, for others is well this is the data why is it like this maybe i can explain in the later slides and for the pearson correlation for sentences is i think is higher than the chunks or oh no the chunks is still higher but still there is not well distributed but we can see that when you use when the method is tuned for English to France language pair that method tuned for this can still work 
perfectly fine using when it's applied to the French and to English language pair and you can see the rest whether you, the tune uh, method tune for certain language pair can work well on some other language pairs based on this data the higher the value the more likely it, it works better while the lower the value it may not work as well although I did um, explain uh, quite a lot of words in the previous slide but here is the slide where I show the best method ranking I took this table from the github I mean on the data and it shows as I say as I said before that the best method for chunks is the cross language character ngram and then the second best method is the alignment base up to from English to France language pair up to the Spanish to English language pair but for Spanish to France and France to Spanish the song or the source based language pair uh, method is better then followed by yes yeah, the same it just crosses for sentences for the best method for all language pair except for Spanish to French is again the, uh, the character engram while for Spanish to French is the source base and the second best is the source base from me for English and France and vice versa and while for Spanish to France the character engram and the source base well for English to Spanish Spanish to English for sentence for the second base is the translated and the machine uh, uh, the, tra the machine uh, the machine translated model and so on Okay, on this slide is shown, shown the Pearson correlation of language pair and method. Though I did show you between language pairs, but here they provide another uh, Pearson correlation table. But I will explain them anyway. But uh, here I can put the what the Pearson correlation mean for this method is that the higher the Pearson correlation value, the higher the probability that the method can be reused on other objects. So, for example, like for the language pair, the one with the highest Pearson collaboration is French to English language pair. So, if the method is tuned for the French to English language pair, it will likely to work better on other language pair, is what I think. And the second best is the French to English. Oh well, I did write already here that the French to English perform best for reuse case, and the method is the as you can see the the character three gram, n gram have the highest Pearson correlation, meaning that this method can work very well, almost perfect on all other on all other objects. Well, the one, well, the method that is tuned for, for example, um, this one, 0 0.515 CLESA, might not move well, work so well on other objects. Okay, here on this slide, it is shown the performance of each method based on the, uh, based on each type of data set and they show the F1 score in percent but unfortunately on the paper they only provide the result of the English and France because it's too much to put the other results on the paper so but the other result for other language pairs they it's available on their github okay so let's take a look for Wikipedia 
Mm, overall uh, character okay let's look at the overall overall the character engram performs better perform best he performs very well on APR the Amazon product reviews maybe because of short text or whatever but okay but the one that is visible for analysis is the Wikipedia. The best one to be used for both chunk and sentence is the explicit semantical base. The the one that relies on Wikipedia. Okay, let's go back this one so it says plexi semantic analysis model which represents the meaning of a document by vector based on vocabulary derived from wikipedia to find a document within a corpus so it's most likely that, that this method works well on wikipedia because wikipedia is a uh, comparable comparably translated so yeah, because the alignment is comparable, which why this method works better. For the others, this one is uh, ngram. This one ngram two. For APR ngram as well. For Europol is okay. Depends in chunk level. The alignment base is better, but for the sentence level, still the source base is better. Mm, cannot discuss much about this one, but the one that is visible is Wikipedia. Now, then the second experiment is I also take this from the slide, but I modified it based on my on some words. So it says this one said although previous slide shows the F1 scores each method have their own fingerprint. So this is my own work. Own word. Their clustering capacity and the distribution of their mismatches. Yeah, okay, that's what it means. So their experiment used one thousand English textual units was compared to their corresponding unit in French and to one another not relevant French unit and each unit must strictly lead to one match and one mismatch equals 1000 matches and 1000 mismatches so these two steps were repeated 10 times like the experiment one and leading to a tenfold validation so this slide shows the method threshold precision recall in F1 so the map there, so all the methods including link model and random baseline and some is not here which is the explicit model mm, maybe it's changed to the link model so here we shown the threshold precision recall and F1 even though that the 3 gram shows a high F1 score but it doesn't show some show trash, good threshold value while the alignment similarity based analysis shows a uh, high threshold so what does it mean the decision threshold so this one is a text that i cropped from the paper itself so i think this is their explanation so the decision threshold is very different for cross language alignment similarity analysis in base analysis which is 0 0.7 compared to other methods which is around 0 0.1 and random baseline is the worst very low 0 0.03 this means that this method discriminates more correctly the positive than the negative when it seems to be the opposite for the other methods uh, discriminating more correctly the positive and the negative I will explain more on the another slide so but the positive and negative is can be shown on this slide so they call this the fingerprint of each method 
by using a distribution histogram of the positive and negative uh, mismatches based on the percentage of the similarity so I also crop their explanation on the paper and it, it says like this that the x-axis represents the similarity score in percentage computed by the method and the y-axis represents the number of mismatches found for a given similarity score in white in the upper part of the figures the positive units that need to be matched so in other is a positive mismatch is that this much should be matched while it doesn't and the black and in black in the lower part the negative units that should not be matched this so either way both both of these shouldn't occur the the best method should have a very low positive mismatch and positive and negative mismatch so a good method should have almost like a plain histogram for example the random baseline has like a very lots of positive and negative mismatches so this can be shown as the worst result that there are many positive that should be matched or there are many negatives that shouldn't be matched for the link model shows okay result from 0% to 30% but it then shows some um, some positive mismatches after the 30% similarity when above when 30% similarity occurs hmm. okay let's move next for the cross language character 3 gram as you can see when it's above 10% there is no negative mismatches meaning that there shouldn't be there they it's able to discriminate correctly for the for things that shouldn't be matched but it shows some signs um, some values of positive mismatches wait okay mm, i think this is not that much and for the source base conceptual source base uh, model similarity base if you can if you see here almost no negative mismatches and only few big positive mismatches now in the previous slide what he said about about the uh, why the cross language alignment similarity mm -hmm. alignment based similarity analysis have a high threshold because there is almost no positive mismatches they claim although i see here there is uh, above 90 percent but mm, compared to others maybe not that much i mean the value and there's very few peaks of negative mismatches okay and this one is for the machine translated model some degree of positive and negative mismatches okay by the way these are the fingerprints of each method is what they say so next is the conclusion of the presentation slide that I made so I took the research questions from the original slide but I eliminated one because I don't really understand about it and the conclusion that I found on their slide also um, seems to answer their research questions so the research question is how do the state-of-the-art methods behave according to the characteristic of the compared text and their answer of the was that the result shows a common behavior of methods across different language pairs 
as you, and it says strong correlation across language size and type of text remember the F1 scores the Pearson correlation analysis and the okay and yeah the F1 scores and the Pearson correlation between language pairs between the methods and the corpus itself and the second question is this question is are the state of the art methods complementary this is about the threshold and the distribution about the second experiment their fingerprint so their answer is that the methods behave differently in clustering even if they seem similar in performance so they have their own fingerprint that's what they want to say I mean that's what I perceive though. and thank you for watching this video if you are watching and I know that I didn't mean it I did not explain that well on this presentation but yeah I give it a try and maybe I should study more so I could I should study more about this field in natural language processing plagiarism similarity so that I can explain better next time but really if I have more experience, I'll redo this presentation.